Hello, in this tutorial, we will implement a teleport effect using a retro pixel post process. First, create a material for the post process. Next, set the material domain to post process. Then, create a scene texture and set it to post process input 0. Create a component mask with R, G, and B checked, and connect the nodes as shown in the video to display the usual background. Copy the nodes created so far for later use. Create a screen position to use the screen's UV. Next, create a multiply node and create a parameter node by clicking the left mouse button while pressing the S key. Set the amount of pixelization on the screen in the parameter node and use the multiply node to increase the UV of the screen position by the specified value. Next, use a floor node to extract only integers from the screen UV so that the horizontal and vertical coordinates appear as integers equal to the parameter value. Then, use a divide node to divide the entire UV by the parameter value and reset the coordinate values to 0 tilde 1 to create a dot effect. Next, create a radial gradient exponential node to create a circular mask for the post process. Use a parameter node to adjust the radius value of the radial gradient node. Next, create a lerp node and connect the nodes as shown in the video to the lerp node. After connecting, if you connect the lerp node to the emissive color pin, you can see that the center of the screen is not pixelized, while the edges of the screen center are pixelized. Now let's configure the post process. Open the character's blueprint. Add a post process component. In the details of the post process, create an array in the rendering features post process material. Next, in the construction script, create a create dynamic material instance node and set the post process material you just created to make it a dynamic material that can change parameters during the gameplay. Also, create a variable for reference elsewhere. Next, drag the post process from the components window to the construction script to create a set setting node. Then, drag the pin of the setting node to create a make post process node and add a post process material pin to the make post process node to set the post process material settings. Next, create a make weighted blendables node to activate the post process create the required array, and connect it to the previously added post-process material pin. Add the dynamic material to the activated post-process array using the Make Weighted Blendable node. Now, if you play the game, you can see the post-process applied to the screen. Next, create a blueprint for the teleport. In the component window, click the Add button to create a box collision and adjust its size. Next, create a Get Actor of Class node and connect it to the Event Begin Play node so that the warp location is determined when the level starts. Set players start in the Get Actor of Class node and create a variable to reference various information about the player start at the level. Next, create overlap event nodes from the box collision. Cast the character's blueprint to the overlap event node so that when the character overlaps with the box collision, an event occurs. Next, create a sequence node and connect it to the begin overlap node to make the events work in a series. Next, to prevent character input when entering the teleport and allow it again later, create disable input and enable input nodes. Connect both nodes to the get player controller node and the cast node of the casted character. Next, connect a delay node to ensure the teleport function occurs after a set amount of time has passed. Then, create a teleport node with the teleport function and connect it to the delay node.
Retrieve the initially created player start actor variable and use the get actor location node to obtain the location value of the player start. Connect the get actor location node to the teleport node to set the destination for the teleport function. To naturally display the post process effect, create a timeline node. Then, create a track in the timeline similar to the video. To change the dynamic material parameter value, load the dynamic material variable from the character's cast node. Next, create two set scalar parameter value nodes to set the parameter values. Set the name of each node to radius and pixel. Connect the timeline node to the set scalar parameter value nodes as shown in the video. Finally, connect the overlap nodes to the timeline node, so that the teleport and timeline functions can be executed when the character overlaps. Place the completed teleport in the desired location within the level. If you run it, you'll see that the initial value of the post process has not been set. Go back to the post process material and change the radius parameter value to 2 which is the starting value of the timeline. Now when you execute and the character goes to the install teleport location, they will momentarily become immobilized and then teleport with the pixelized effect displayed on the screen.